Welcome home. I'm Dr. Tama, a minister, licensed psychologist, and sacred artist. And this is Homecoming, a podcast to facilitate your journey home to yourself. While I will provide weekly inspiration and mental health tips, this podcast is not a substitute for therapy. I'm so excited you're on the journey. If you want to request specific topics or share your progress, email me at homecomingpodcast at gmail.com. Also, after you listen, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Let's begin. Welcome home, co-journers. I am so glad you're here for another episode. And we have a poetry submission from Isabel Nicodemus. And if there are those listening for the first time, you're invited to write a poem about your homecoming journey and send it to me if you'd like me to share it on air to homecomingpodcasts at gmail.com. And Isabel wrote this poem for all the women leaders that deserve the recognition and appreciation and the way in which they show her Uh, that she is also deserving of appreciation. And Isabel's poem is Play You on Repeat Because Your Words Are So Sweet Healing to This Aching Soul Fills the Gaping Hole You Don't Doubt Me, My Serenity As I Play the End of the Road I Have Asked for So Long Seeking Through Songs Stay Calm Stay strong. I try, I try, and try until I realize who I am, always was. Woman, lioness, I do not lie. Let this be the beginning I always had faith in. Let this be, and you will see all you've done for me. Thank you so much. Isabel, we love that piece and so important, those pieces of reminding us to stay calm and remember our strength as we continue to try. And I have to let you know, I really appreciate you having in your poem, Lioness. And when I used to perform spoken word more often, uh, that was actually my name in spoken word was the lioness. And so I really smiled when I received your email. I am excited about today's topic, which has been requested by a number of you. And so we're going to talk about caregiver stress and fatigue. And I'm going to speak about this broadly. So when I talk about the caregiver or care provider, I'm going to include those who that is the name of their profession, Um, but I'm also going to include parents, uh, teachers, ministers, therapists, social workers, people who are holding it down. If you are holding it down and supporting other people in your family, in your community, uh, at your job, if you are considered one of the strong ones, If a lot of people or even one other person uh, lean on you, depends on you, being a caregiver during any time can be challenging. But particularly during a pandemic, uh, there is so much that you are holding. And so this episode is really dedicated to the quote unquote strong ones. It is my hope for you that you have space and place for breath, that you have space and place for gentleness, where you even have space and place for tears, to tell the truth about your own fatigue, about your needs. I hope that you have space and place to remember yourself, that sometimes we can lose sight of ourselves 
as we are busy tending to the needs of others. And while that is a beautiful act of care, it is a wonderful gift that you are giving to others. It is also so important that you are nurtured, that you are nourished, that you get to rest, that you get to breathe. And I know that can be especially difficult when you are a caregiver, a care provider. And so this space is for you, for you to remember how important it is for you to come home to yourself, that you may spend a large part of your time and energy trying to help other people to make it home, trying to help other people to be comfortable, to feel cared for, to be loved. And I want you to know your mental health matters, your physical health matters, your spirit matters, and you are significant and worthy of care. And I invite you to think about being gentle with yourself and being compassionate with yourself. So all caregivers can face stress and strain, and then there are those who may face additional stress and strain. So one reason is, as I mentioned, if you're a care provider in the midst of a global pandemic, that definitely can increase your stress. It also can increase it if you are living with the person that you are caring for. So it is one thing to care for people and then uh, out in the world and then go home and uh, be off and able to just rest, relax, and try to release the day. It is another thing when you are a caregiver to those who you live with. And that may be your job where uh, you live with the people you're caring for, or they may be uh, your relatives, your family, and uh, you may be an ongoing long-term care provider, or you may be in the position of care provider taking care of someone uh, who has COVID. Uh, whatever the circumstance, we want to be mindful of all of what you are carrying. Uh, it can add to the stress if you are socially isolated. And we know during this time, there is um, intentionally a lot more physical distancing. And so this sense that you're in it by yourself. And I want to remind you of our homecoming community uh, that is here listening with you on the journey with you. And among the co-journers are some other care providers and so you are, are not alone uh, socially or even spiritually, even though physically uh, you very well may be. Uh, it can also be challenging and stressful if you yourself um, are struggling with mental health challenges. So if you live with depression, live with anxiety, you live with other health conditions personally, while you are also trying to take care of someone else, whether that is your child, your parent, your sibling, uh, a client, whoever those persons are, while you are trying to be mindful of their needs, you may have uh, your own needs, not only in general, but in terms of your mental health or physical health conditions. It's also additionally challenging to be a caregiver when you are facing, uh, when you're handling financial difficulties. So when you're stressed about money, uh, this is especially hard of trying to make ends meet, not only for yourself, but trying to make sure the person you are caring for has what they need, those resources. And so whether we are thinking about uh, keeping the roof over our heads, whether we're thinking about food or the high cost of medications, uh, the high cost of uh, medical bills and equipment uh, that some 
need the high cost of various support services. And so this can definitely create more uh, anxiety and strain for care providers. And then the number of hours that you spend being a caregiver can add to your stress. So um, especially during these times, many people are either being asked to work longer hours, uh, the demand is great, the need is great, um, or if you're taking care of people in your home or also working in your home, then there may not necessarily ever feel like uh, a time that is off, right? You may feel that you're always on and it may not just be a perception or a feeling, but a reality um, uh, of always having to be ready or responsive or engaged uh, to varying degrees. Um, having difficulty with your coping skills um, or perhaps the things you used to do to cope that were helpful um, have not been so helpful or they're not accessible because we're in the pandemic. Um, and then I will say, uh, that there are those who are caregivers, care providers, and it's not what you chose to do. So it's one thing if I kind of signed up for it, right? That this is what I wanted to do. And so I am doing what I feel pulled to do in my heart um, versus not having a choice. And um, the, the lack of choice may be for a number of reasons. Uh, you may, it may be a family member you're caring for and everyone else has kind of disappeared or is not uh, being supportive. Um, it may be that you wanted to transition to a different type of work, um, but it is hard to find something else. And so you may feel like you're stuck um, or uh, you may have, uh, envision that you would be parenting with someone else and now you are holding that uh, responsibility by yourself. And so when a part of your caregiving role has been beyond your control or doesn't fully feel like it was your choosing, uh, that can be uh, an additional stress. So what are some indications that you may be experiencing the stress and fatigue. And I know for most of you listening, you don't need me to tell you the signs. You can tell me how you know uh, how tired you are. But sometimes we're even disconnected from ourselves and we can become so busy in the hustle and bustle of life that we're not fully tuned in to the impact that it is having on you. And so if you find yourself feeling overwhelmed and always worried, uh, that can be a sign or an indication. And I know uh, that for some of you, if you are always on, that feeling of being overwhelmed might just be beneath the surface. So you might feel like for your kids or your parents or your clients that you're always holding it together and fighting back the tears or trying to uh, act like you you have more control over the circumstance than you really do. Um, but within you, there may be a sense of panic, of worry, or even you may feel uh, that you resonate with the sentence uh, that is too much, right? That this is too much. So if that is uh, a feeling you can connect with, those are words you can connect with uh, for us to remove the, the shame about that, that you have been carrying a lot. You've been carrying a lot and it hasn't just been for a minute, right? It hasn't, wasn't like, oh, a stressful week or even a stressful month, right? You've been carrying it for a while. And so feeling tired um, often, it may be even when you wake up in the morning, you're already tired, or you may not have a good sleep. And that may be because of the worry or depression, or it may be having to keep getting up to check on uh, the person you're taking care of. Uh, you may find yourself uh, having difficulty getting up or difficulty falling asleep. You may have also noticed changes in your appetite 
And so for some of you, you may be so stressed that you've lost your appetite and you're missing meals, you know, so it's almost like someone needs to say to you, did you eat something today? Like you made sure that your client ate or your parents ate or your child ate or your sibling ate. Um, but what, what about you? Um, and so some people have a loss of appetite or just have so much on their minds that uh, they are missing uh, nutrients. Or on the other hand, uh, some of you, that may be your only outlet, um, is trying to comfort yourself with food. So you may notice that you've been putting on a lot of weight. Um, and so tuning into how uh, the stress, the strain, the fatigue may be showing up in your body. You may also have noticed that you've been more irritable or more angry. And that uh, is very challenging um, for you, but also for the people you're trying to take care of, right? That if you are losing patience and uh, you find yourself uh, getting very um, upset with them or angry or irritated or blaming them for things that are beyond their control. So um, if you're taking care of someone who needs help, for example, um, with the bathroom or bathing or dressing, um, or if you're taking care of uh, your children who are at home and they're having trouble staying focused with the online learning or having trouble following through with assignments, um, or you're uh, tending to uh, clients, if you're a therapist, a social worker, a mental health professional, and you find yourself uh, getting impatient uh, with the people you're working with, that may be a sign of the burnout, of the fatigue, uh, of the strain. Um, if the things that you used to enjoy, you just don't enjoy anymore, so I've mentioned some things are just not available now because of the times we're living in. Um, but also there may be things, you know, you used to love to read and you can't remember the last time you read a book or you used to like watching certain shows. But now either you don't turn it on or you turn it on and you fall asleep or you turn it on and uh, the TV is watching you, but you're not really paying attention um, or you're just not moved by it all. Um, you may find yourself feeling sad, depressed, tearful. Some of you may have the stress show up in your body with headaches, with uh, nausea, aches and pains in your body, back ache, uh, feeling tight or sore. And uh, we also want to be aware that uh, some may be coping by increasing your use of alcohol or other drugs, um, including prescription medications, um, but really monitoring and tuning into, has that become uh, your outlet? Has that become the thing that you're turning to and that you have concern for yourself, if you're being honest, or maybe even other people have voiced concern about um, the amount that you're drinking or smoking, or uh, taking in other substances. And so I really want to start with inviting you to give yourself permission to take breath and to really release the shame, the embarrassment, the harshness, the judgment, not only of others, of those you're caring for, but also of yourself. That sometimes we can be so driven uh, so perfectionistic, so hard on ourselves. The you know bar is so high, and so you can feel like uh, you're failing, feel like you're drowning, feel like if you were some other kind of person, you would be doing a much better job, and that other people must be great at it, but just you're not cut out for it. So we can have such um, harsh judgments for ourselves. So I invite you to really uh, embrace yourself emotionally and perhaps even physically uh, to really take in the fullness of everything that you've been doing. You've had a lot on your plate, a lot of responsibility uh, on your shoulders, 
You've been holding and carrying a lot in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit. And I invite you to really take breath and give yourself compassion, acknowledging the things that you have done well or the things that you have been able to complete by just getting through the day, you know, having the meals prepared, if that's a part of what you're doing, uh, getting uh, the person their medication, if that's a part of what you're doing, uh, trying to straighten up. It may not be the cleanest, but uh, to the level you've been able to do that, um, being thoughtful to try to check in with the person and seeing what they're feeling, what they're needing. Um, it has, it's been a lot. And so breath and compassion are so important. And then I invite you to really uh, recognize the gifts that you have given, even if it wasn't perfect, right? So uh, taking off the judgment and the, the need for perfection and just giving yourself some appreciation for what you have done and then perhaps needing to set more realistic goals that sometimes the schedule we have set up is really not possible, that it is uh, inhumane. It does not honor the fact that you are a human being. Yes. And so taking another look at your schedule, your expectation of yourself, everything that you're carrying on a day to day basis. So you may need to uh, relook at your expectations and set some priorities of what are the things that must be done? What are the things that it would be nice if I could get them done? And what are the things that, to be honest, are not going to happen? Yes. What are the things that must be done? What are the things that I hope I can get to? And what are the things that if I am honest with myself, that is not going to happen today? Yes. So as we set more realistic goals, we can take away some of that stress and pressure so that we are not setting ourselves up for failure every day and then ending each day feeling insufficient and inadequate. Not only do we want to give ourselves compassion and set realistic goals and appreciate what we have done, we also want to begin to ask for help. And when we ask for help to prepare our hearts, minds, and spirits to receive it, asking for it, and then when it is offered, uh, being willing to receive it. And that help might be from other family members. It might be from professionals. But looking at what, if anything, can I get support with? And even if it's not going to be a daily or a weekly commitment, even if it's occasional, if someone is willing to help me out occasionally for me to receive that. And so what can you take off of your plate? What can you delegate? What can you request? What uh, responsibilities can you share that we can take off the superwoman cape, the superman cape, and honor our humanity? by asking for help and being willing to receive it instead of immediately saying, I have it, or they're not going to do it the right way. So I release perfectionism. They don't have to do everything exactly the way I would do it for me to receive the help. And then I invite you to seek out some emotional support. Uh, that the person you are caring for, the people you're taking care of, whether clients or children or parents or siblings, um, whomever they may be, uh, you are primarily pouring into them. You are primarily uh, trying to be 
a blessing to them, tending to their needs. Um, but you also want to develop some mutual relationships. You want to cultivate some friendships that are bi-directional, where you don't have to pretend. Uh, and again, I say it's mutual. So not just a friend that I'm going to dump everything on, but where I'm going to listen to them and they're going to listen to me and it's a reciprocal and we support each other. That's, you know, what friendship or companionship or family life is. You may also think about joining support groups. A number of support groups um, are available online. And so, you know, looking in your area or because it's online, it doesn't have to be in your direct area for caregiver support or uh, parenting support groups, caretaker support groups. Um, if you're a mental health professional, looking at um, uh, group supervision, ways that you can support yourself and your work with other mental health professionals. And so seeking out uh, both formal and informal connections where you can be honest, where you can be transparent, where you can let go. That is so important. And not only to have relationships where I can talk about the stress of my day, or you can talk about the stress of your day, but also relationships that I can have some joy in, right? So that the center of my full conversation does not always have to be the caregiving, right? But you are a full human being. So there are parts of you that have been neglected. There are parts of you that are uh, not only being a nurse, a doctor, a therapist, a parent, a teacher, a caregiver. Yes, those are roles that you have. That is a part of your identity. But what about the other part? Right. If you are an artist, an activist, a spiritual person, um, a thoughtful person, a person who likes comedy, a musician, uh, someone who loves to cook, a foodie, right? Whatever the other parts of you, uh, for those to have space to come alive, to have relationship, friendships where you can nurture and express those aspects of yourself. And then it is also important for you to tend to your uh, body. And so being mindful and intentional about eating, being mindful and intentional about trying to get more rest so that we're not just, you know, spending all the time on the phone or all the time caregiving um, to really lay down. And even if you say, well, my mind is racing, at least let your body relax, right? Even if your mind it has trouble letting go of the day, uh, your back is carrying a lot, right? Your neck and shoulders are carrying a lot. And so to take a bath, if you can, doing self-massage, if you can, laying down and resting, if you can, and then also moving your body because we carry so much in the body. And so going for a walk, even if you go on a walk with those that you're providing care for, or if that is not feasible, uh, stretching, exercising uh, in the home, right? With videos or if you have equipment there or with no equipment and no video, just getting up and uh, stretching your body is going to be so important. And I invite you to really think about your health, your wellness, and to really consider also therapy that you are giving and caring for others and you're holding a lot. And so it will be good if you could have a space where you do not have to be the caregiver, where you do not have to be the strong one, where you do not have to be contained or a superhero, where you can really let go that there are some tears that are perhaps waiting to be released. There is some frustration that is perhaps waiting to be released. 
there is some grief that is perhaps waiting to be released. There may be some resentment. There may be some fatigue. There may be some exhaustion that is waiting to be released. And you deserve safe space, sanctuary, holy ground where you can be fully honest, where you can be fully transparent, where you can receive, where you can be poured into. So I want you to know on today that I see you, I am thinking about you, and you really are not in it by yourself. That here in this homecoming journey, there are many who are caring for others while also trying to be mindful to tend to themselves, to take care of our own gardens. So I'm excited about your being intentional with even listening to this week's episode and doing some things for you because you are worthy of care. I invite your soul to tell your heart, mind, body, and spirit, welcome home.